University Challenge has been baffling students and delighting audiences for the past 52 years. <laughs> Over 43 series, more than a 1,000 teams have gone head-to-head -head in a bid to be crowned the brightest scholars in Britain. I'm completely swept away by how much they know. From the dreaming spires of Oxbridge to the rugged red bricks, this quiz has real prestige and has coined a few catchphrases along the way. Here's the first start of a ten. Now, for the first time in the show's history, we followed the students' journey, from the initial team selection to the moment they walk out onto the iconic studio floor. Fingers on the buzzers, here's your first start of a ten. So, what's in store for these bright young things? You do sort of see your life flashing before your eyes in the final of the university challenge. How clever do they have to be? These are young people who know amazing things. Edinburgh Herbert. Mm, reticulum fabulosa. Sounds like something of Harry Potter. And which institutions have what it takes to make the grade and become the University Challenge class of 2014? University Challenge Tournament, asking the questions, Van der Gascoigne. Hello, um... University Challenge is as popular with viewers and students today as it was at its creation in 1962. Most people don't know most of the answers. It is nevertheless great fun to hear strange things that you don't actually know about. I was never good enough to get onto it, but I certainly used to watch it. People increasingly wanted their children to watch it on the, I think, wrong assumption that they're going to improve their <laughs> intelligence. I don't think the show has changed a great deal since 1962 at all. The format remains the same. You buzz in, answer a starter question correctly, so your team can try some bonus questions. That's really the only rule we've got. Here's your start for ten. St Hilda's Evans. Picasso. Picasso, ten points, St Hilda. Ten seconds to go. Okay, the rules are constant as the Northern Star, so fingers on the buzzers. If you don't know the rules by now, you never will, so fingers on the buzzers. Here's your starter for ten. Somerville Beer. Richard Lionheart. It is indeed Richard the First, yes. We've got two distinguishing characteristics that rule and the oldest special effect in television, in which one team appears to be sitting on top of the other. Every year sees hundreds of universities apply, hoping to be represented on screen and become part of the show's illustrious history. Trinity Ridley. A million. One million is correct, yes. I've heard universities say that winning University Challenge um, gave them more positive publicity than when one of their, their faculty won a Nobel Prize. I've been told later on that apparently the year after the win, the rate of applications to the college went up. It was even more fun, you know, pressing the, the buzzer and answering the questions and getting it all right and impressing Jeremy Paxman, uh, you know, than it is to watch. Um, so it's definitely something I would recommend. For the first time ever, we followed the selection process every step of the way. We'll also take a closer look at how some institutions pick their teams. And the captain of our team is James Gearbrandt. Hear the students' hopes and fears as they face the tough audition process. I think, like, university students put themselves forward as sort of England's best and brightest. We'll examine the institutions that have a formidable history with the show. We're the first ever to have won it three times, and we actually got to keep the trophy. And reveal the final lineup of the 28 teams that will make up the University Challenge class of 2014. It's going to be a pretty damn good series. Hello, last time we saw Somerville College, Oxford, win the first place... But before the students even get a sniff of Paxo, there are hurdles to overcome. And the first is selecting the perfect team to put forward for the auditions. This process is a minefield, so first we thought we'd ask the experts how they did it. Everyone turned up, they asked a set of questions. Of course, in those days, there was no uh, confiscating iPads and iPhones to check the answers with a quick Google. We did some tests in the beer cellar, but then sort of we just talked to each other and got a team together. I picked a bunch of people that I knew who I thought were good at quizzes, mainly from the people who used to waste money standing at the quiz machine in the college bar. They did it as a very light-hearted uh, quiz with a, a book that they'd bought from the, the shop next door for a pound. I think... They've never actually admitted this, so you'd have to uh, ask them, but I think the reason they made me captain is that I was a mate of theirs. Now they tend to be much more, much more organised about how they choose their teams, and you don't know whether they've chosen a team because they all know each other, or whether because they've had, as generally happens, quizzes to choose who'll be the best four to represent the institution. 
any seat of learning can apply to be on the show as long as it has university status. And each institution has its own method of picking their best lineup. And on a cold December day at City University in London, the students are gearing up to pick their team to try out for 2014. I'm a journalism student. I'm here to take part in the University Challenge, hopefully get selected. I'm Justin Wong, and I'm a law student at City University. I'm Susie Clark. I'm a, a nursing student. Well, I'm becoming a speech and language therapist. My name's Ian MacDonald. I'm the general manager of the Students' Union. Sometimes we get on to the televised rounds, uh, and once we got as far as the quarterfinals. With no shortage of eager students to choose from, what is the magic formula for the perfect team? Um, team selection. It's important to have people with different strengths. I'm OK on English, history, music, arts, geography, uh, biology, pathology. Uh, I'm probably not too good at maths. These days in particular, somebody who's more on the maths and science side. Let's leave aside the maths questions, which I don't frankly understand. Well, every good team needs a historian. Hopefully, I'll be strong in uh, maybe geography, history. You're a bit nutty not to have at least one scientist on the team. My speciality when I go to the pub quiz is um, like science questions. I love the science questions. And one time, we are in the quiz and we got to, we were a draw with the other team that always wins every week and we always come second. And the subject was science. And you said one person, and I went to be the one person for science. The question was, in which year was insulin first used for medical purposes? And that was 1922, but I said 1921. The other one's a doctor. She said 1923. Went to the second science head-to-head -head question. Oh my goodness. And uh, it was how many muscles in a cat's ear control its directional movement? The answer is 32. I said 16. She said 8. So it's science. I'm going to win at science. The Perfect University Challenge team is a team that is made up of uh, people who are massive fans of the show, I think that helps enormously because they know how the show works. I think the people who read widely have a massive advantage, whether they're, they're the kind of people who take atlases to bed and read them with, with a torch under the covers, or people who actually take the time to read dictionaries from A to Z. Really, the people you'll see on screen are the people who do that and have always done that. I was on the University Challenge team uh, my first year and my second year. I've actually applied before when I was at my last university. Unfortunately, we didn't get onto the televised stages. I think it's a fantastic opportunity uh, for students to show what they can do, to really show the breadth of the knowledge. City University's bespoke selection process asked their hopefuls to answer six rounds of questions, four on general knowledge and two on science. It's the five highest scorers who will be selected, as the University Challenge rules state that each team must consist of four players and a reserve. Hydrogen has three isotopes, protium, tritium, and which other? I would love to be the team captain, but who knows, there's stiff competition here. Lots of intellectuals surrounding me here today. I'm as curious as anyone as, as to what makes the perfect team and, and what, what sort of combination they're, um, they're looking for. Our captain will be the person who gets the highest score. Tonight, I think, you know, we could have our, our quarter finalists and maybe even the winners. Three institutions, the Universities of London, Oxford and Cambridge, enter the competition from their individual colleges, which provide the students teaching. Today, at Churchill College, Cambridge, student and avid fan of the show, Kyle Lamb, has taken it upon himself to create his own team. I'm Kyle Lamb, and I'm a third-year medical student. Today, we're basically running the trials for our university challenge team. Since I was a little kid, I've always been really keen on quizzing. Hoping for around 20 people to turn up. I'm definitely a big fan of the show. I always watch it. Big fan of Jeremy Paxman. <laughs> Jeremy Paxman, you know, who doesn't like Paxo? You know? So I've looked at the questions and I've picked up ones I kind of know, but I've also picked up ones I don't know, so otherwise it'll be really like kind of like a, a biased uh, selection of questions. Hopefully we'll get a good mix of people. People who like quizzes are definitely a different species already. Um, yeah, they tend to be very competitive. I'm Teddy, I do medicine. I'm Roland, and I'm doing uh, natural sciences. I'm Alice, and I'm doing astrophysics. Hi, guys, we're coming in. Hopefully, the top scorers will get to be on the team. 
Churchill have won the University Challenge uh, before. And we're keen to do that again. Personally, I'd like to be the captain. Thanks for turning up, everyone. Good luck. Peace out. Kyle has compiled a written test of 25 questions, and the top scorers will make it onto his team. Meanwhile, City University's test is nearly over. Which city in Northern England was the birthplace or became the home of the poets Andrew Love Marvel, Stevie Smith and Philip Larkin? I didn't do very well on the science round at all. I think I got one right. Uh, the general knowledge was OK. Oh, it was so much harder than I thought it would be. I was surprised with my science round because I'm not actually studying science. I think it was mostly luck. Oh, is it superior oblique? Mm -hmm. I know that because I learned it in a song about the cranial nerves. <laughs> and I always say I know all the anatomy from the neck up. And then I put tongue. I know it's not the tongue. If there's one organ I know about, it's the bloody tongue. It's pretty tough, wasn't it? Yeah. It's quite difficult. <laughs> there's just going to be a lot of trouble if any one of us gets through, though. I think that would be at the end of our we'll friendship, to to definitely. The quiz papers are marked, so it's time to reveal the chosen five who will be representing City University's application. We're just looking now, and we think we've got a team we're just about to announce it. OK, we have an initial winner, which is the winner of the science round. Um, could Owen Kennedy please stand up and come, come to the front? Top scorer and the captain of our team is James Gearbrandt. <laughs> the next member of the team is Jonathan Williams. And the fourth member of the team is Catherine Drum. <laughs> and the reserve member of the team is Ali Nihat. None of us have met before, but um, I think that's good. I mean, it uh, obviously means that we're representing probably quite a wide range of subjects, I guess. So um, hopefully we can galvanise ourselves into, into a really good team. Back at Churchill College, Cambridge, Kyle has marked his papers and the results are in. Two students have scored highly and are offered an immediate place to represent the Churchill College application. Uh, quite a few of you got 11, uh, but the top two, um, so in second place was Roland with 12, which is very good, and also um, David in first place with 17 out of 25, which is very impressive. Kyle is now left to deliberate on who else will make up his dream team. City have their team in place. The next stage is to apply to the TV show via an application form. Each year, around 130 teams apply, but only 28 will be selected for the programme. We're filling in all our application forms and answering the big university challenge tests in words such as chrysanthemum and chrysalis. The Greek chris refers to which metal? It's great to be representing um, City University, which is a university that actually doesn't get on university challenge all that often. Yeah, here's to hopefully further success in the competition. Cheers. 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 One team that does make it onto screen regularly are reigning university challenge champions, Trinity College, Cambridge. Trinity, you're the champions. Well done. To win the 2014 University Challenge Series was amazing. I mean, I felt absolutely ecstatic. It was, it, it was so good that you couldn't really believe it was happening. I think it takes a while to sink in, that kind of thing, because you just don't see it coming. And then suddenly, it's actually been done, and that's just always going to be true. It's a title they're used to, having won the series three times, the first in 1974. Trinity Cambridge. <laughs> and Trinity, can I now invite you to join me for the presentation of the award? And notably, it was Trinity who won on Jeremy Paxman's first run out as Quizmaster in 1995. When we were given the trophy, I think it was a, it's all a bit of a blur in my mind. It's only the day after when you realise the enormity of what you've done. Trinity College Cambridge was founded in 1546 by Henry VIII. Its motto of virtus vera nobilitas, meaning virtue is true nobility. With over a 1,000 students, Trinity is the largest of Cambridge's colleges. But will this year's team make it into the class of 2014? Here to defend their title and try and secure a place on this year's show are... third-year physicist Matthew Willits. What makes it really good television, in my mind, is the fact that it is so intellectually honest. Mathematician Michael Dunn-Gurchin. It's a real privilege to get the opportunity to spend time with, you know, such interesting and interested people as um, my colleagues on the team. Their captain, chemistry student Hugh Bennett. 
I was reserved for the team last year, um, which was really good fun, going through the whole process with them and obviously uh, enjoying their success. Fourth year classicist Claire Hall. I think it's going to be quite a different experience being on it from, from watching it. I don't think I'm ever going to shout impatiently at the TV again. And mathematics student Alid Walker. It tests your cultural awareness and your, your cultural inculcation in, in some sense. And so it, it's a little more than just a quiz show, as it were. For this year's team, what is it about Trinity College that makes it so special? Two things. So first, I'm studying mathematics, and Trinity has a reputation in mathematics as being preeminent. The second thing is, is when I came to visit, I was just overwhelmed by what a beautiful place this is. So I came. That moment when you first step into Trinity, it's, it's just such an oasis of calm. Just outside the front are these busy streets. It just feels wonderful to be able to walk out of my room, you know, walk down the stairs and be in this huge space. I set myself a challenge in my second year to try to learn to juggle five uh, balls. I specialise in the interface between something called combinatorics and number theory. So combinatorics, in some sense, it's clever counting. Mathematics can sometimes be a bit serious. So do quite a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan operetta. I usually get up quite early in the morning. I like to, you know, start off nice and fresh. And um, in the morning, I usually do a little bit of debate practice. I just take a random topic, think about it for 15 minutes, then stand up and give a seven-minute speech saying why it would be a good idea. It's a great way to get the brain going after, um, you know, a rather long night. A lot of my extracurricular stuff is actually um, academic stuff in disguise. I learn Icelandic. I go to history of maths lectures and uh, generally hang out with mathematicians a lot. At the moment, I'm doing kind of a lot on the history of late antiquity, and then I'm doing a thing on paleography, so learning to read manuscripts, um, which is a lot more fun than it sounds. Living in Trinity is simply wonderful, and nobody takes it for granted. This chapel is surprisingly secular in many ways, in that we've got huge statues of the sort of famous people of the college out in the anti-chapel. Newton, have obviously. To Newton. Have to start with Newton. <laughs> We've also got Tennyson. Somehow ended up as president of the Cambridge Union. I've ended up, you know, being in that position at quite a young age. I'm 19. A lot to do while being a student, but, um, you know, if I wanted an easy life, I'd have gone to Oxford. People come through it over the years. Um, a lot of people that I've really looked up to. Isaac Newton's an obvious one. This is the North Cloister of Neville's Court in Trinity. And this is where Isaac Newton first determined the speed of sound. To study in the same place where all of them came is just, um, just really incredible. Michael, would you like to demonstrate? Hearing the echo, you can work out what the speed is very simply. This is a really nice room where you can play the piano when you want to do something a bit different. When I'm not in lectures and supervisions, I'm in the lab. I'm working on synthesizing a natural product, and it's a molecule that could have some really, um, really strong anti-cancer properties and applications. We are all friends. We would all know each other. Can we please get his <laughs> phone case on film? It's, it's a Justin Bieber <laughs> phone case. <laughs> That's nice. It's not like we're some sort of 1990s boy band. Though, I mean, perhaps that would be a, a career that he might consider in the future. Well, why not? Just got, got so, not? so many great songs. Uh, baby. Baby. Uh, uh, what, a, what a lyricist. And, uh, he didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Justin Bieber. Right? I, think that was, I thought that was my disciples. I thought they were the same. <laughs> we are friends, and that does make it a lot easier. So this is Trinity's chosen team, but the next stage in the process will be crucial, the audition. It's January, and the University Challenge production team set out to meet the students. Every team that applies is invited to interview. Much like a university application, the producers are looking for a combination of academic excellence and great personality. And from over 130 teams, just 28 will be selected. On the road are assistant producer Claire and researchers Paddy and Olivia. Today they're in Cambridge, where they'll see 27 teams, representing a variety of local colleges and institutions. This is our first day in Cambridge, uh, in the lovely uh, Corpus Christi campus. It doesn't really get much more Hogwarty than this. We don't travel no. light. This is all the stuff we have to bring with us. Um, this is all the highly sensitive, confidential information that we have to keep on our person at all times. Also the uh, super high-tech CD player, which we use to play our interview quiz. 
uh, our box, which is entirely full of pens. Um, and this is our paperwork. I'm not sure that it really um, amps up our street cred in any way, but we try and um, shift it to one side before we meet the students. It seems that for the nervous students, the test begins before they enter the room. Yeah, that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, we always have to put signposts up, because these colleges can be a bit labyrinthine. Although, to be honest, I always think it should be part of the test. If they can't find the room from, you know, three signposts, then maybe they shouldn't be on the show. Having found their way first to audition, Trinity College are here to defend their title. I mean, no, it's like I like do a big faux pas. Yeah, I, I think that could <laughs> yeah, happen. Um, could you like shove it behind this curtain so no one can see our shame? But before the interviews can begin, there's one serious matter to attend to. You would need never know. The trolley. Like some sort of Agatha Christie sort of thing. We're about to interview. I'm feeling caffeinated. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Down the road, it seems that Kyle has finalised his lineup for the Churchill College team, and before the interview, they stop off for a pep talk. Well, I, I'm feeling pretty confident. Uh, I think the rest of the team are really keen for this as well. Yeah. You know, you should just like be yourself, basically. We're all perfectly normal people, so <laughs> we have no worries there. We try and answer every question. Churchill last one in 1970, so all hopes are pinned on these five. Yeah, good luck, everyone. Good luck. Like, uh, yeah. Cheers. For two days, all across Cambridge, students will make their way to Corpus Christi College to audition. We're the team from Emmanuel College, Cambridge. We're from Robinson College, College in Cambridge. Cambridge. We're from St. Catharines. We consider ourselves the friendliest college in Cambridge. We figure there's two ways to get on the show. You can be good or you can be telegenic. Well, no, we have one of the two. <laughs> Some teams will go the extra mile to impress the producers. Well, this is my outfit today. These are my Witch King of Angmar leggings, based on, you know, Lord of the Rings. This is my cool corset. This is my bag with an Irish script called Ogham on it. And all together, it is the stuff left in my wardrobe after I didn't do any washing last week. Ah, hello. The students will sit a tough 40-question quiz. They answer individually, but the score is calculated as a five-person team, four main players and the reserve, so every answer counts. This is the bottom line. You have to have a certain baseline of knowledge, which is quite high, I have to say. Good luck, everybody. What given name links four kings of Scotland, a US civil rights leader murdered in 1965, and the authors of Under the Volcano and The History Man? The Sand Reckoner and On Floating Bodies are works by which mathematician? Which orchestral instrument links Emma Johnson, Andrew Mariner, and Julian Bliss? Who was Prime Minister at the time of the Abolition of Slavery Act? The Lok Sabha is the lower house of Parliament of which country? Add the smallest perfect number to the second smallest prime. How is this number expressed in binary? Question 40. Implying the untying of a knot, which term from French denotes the final unravelling of a plot and the conclusion of a narrative? And on that fitting note, if you'd like to put your pens down, that's the end of the test. I just want to pass them in. Thanks very much. As well as scoring highly in the quiz, the teams also face an interview, as the producers are looking to cast strong characters to represent the national student population. We're looking for teams who have got a certain amount of personality. It's an entertainment show. I do have some nice jumpers. Uh, I, I'm demonstrating that now. <laughs> it's great. Do you remember what it is? Yep, it is Scumbag College, which is a reference to the University Challenge episode of The Young Ones. We want our audience to be entertained by the teams. Stand up to Jeremy, who aren't going to bottle it. They call me the fudge fairy because I give everyone food, so I suppose in the team I am the bringer of the food. We want memorable teams. So I kind of specialise in kind of medieval and early modern because I quite like images and monsters and that kind of thing. With the chats over, all that's left is to take a team snapshot, and the production have their own way of getting the students to smile. Three, if you could all just say, Jeremy. One, two, three. Jeremy! Jeremy! Jeremy. Time for the all-important comparing of notes. 
it could have gone better. It could have gone a lot worse, I guess. After the questions, I think, I hope we still got a good chance. Uh, fingers crossed. The test was hard, but I think we all made like quite intellectual guesses about it, I hope. <laughs> I'm not a betting man, so I'd say 50-50. I, I think, think we've definitely yeah, done the college, college crowd. crowd. I felt so bad I didn't get the chemistry question on the element. I couldn't, I couldn't remember my what? periodic table. Is X equal sin sign, is it parabola? It's a helix. Oh, oh I got I'm that. So <laughs> like... <laughs> One team has certainly made an impression, though not necessarily for the right reasons. So we've just seen the most uh, impressively entertaining team of the day. It was fun. <laughs> so many questions yeah, and they were so fast. Easier general knowledge quizzes. <laughs> and I'm um, just marking the results and now one of them really stood out for me, uh, Catherine the Reserve. <laughs> she apparently thinks that On Floating Bodies was written by Rick Astley. Um, who is also <laughs> an element on the periodic table. I reckon there's a good 11 ricks. <laughs> is that the one you had the no Rick idea? Scale. On the Rick, Rick scale. scale. <laughs> she also thinks that a galaxy and a maths function called a penis-like structure, um, which it's a helix is the answer, but you know, close enough. And then also number eight for the FTP question. Uh, she wrote, this is my personal favorite, uh, police. <laughs> With the Cambridge auditions complete, the students have given their all. But is it enough to compete with the best? Over the years, the show has witnessed some legendary teams, and it's a red brick university that has one of the most prestigious pedigrees of all. The University of Manchester are four-time series champions, a title they currently share with Magdalen College, Oxford. Their first success came in 2006. And since then, they've gone on to enter seriously formidable teams. It was an incredible feeling. It was just pure euphoria. Something was pumping through my veins that just my heart was going. It was, it was half horrible, half amazing. At the gong, University College London have 140 and Manchester University have 190. I was very proud to represent the university. I am quite proud to have been sort of adopted by, by Manchester. And you do, um, you do feel a little bit kind of jingoistic for Manchester. There is a, a sort of a support network of, um, of previous teams, and it's very friendly. Manchester are the team everybody wants to beat. Notably winning in 2012 during the show's 50th anniversary year, the team collected their trophy from none other than Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall at Clarence House. The University of Manchester was established in 1834 and is now the largest single-site university in the United Kingdom. With over 40,000 students to choose from, Manchester have selected what they hope will be the perfect team to impress the producers and win a place in this year's final 28. Here they are, enjoying the fine Mancunian weather. First up is team captain John Radcliffe studying chemical engineering. Some of the other, uh, like, red brick universities, we feel a bit of a camaraderie with them and maybe a bit more rival with some of the Oxbridge colleges. Charlie Rowlands, a first-year genetics and Chinese language student. There's so much to live up to. You've got um, a huge legacy to uphold, as it were. Edmund Chapman, currently reading a PhD in literature. A polite way of putting it would be that I was a precocious child. <laughs> um, you could say I was a little smart pants, I guess. Bari Hindle, a third-year chemistry student. The University of Manchester was put on my radar because of University Challenge. And Matt Stallard, a PhD student reading American Studies. I had a history encyclopedia and, like, a big at world atlas. And I did used to read them in bed <laughs> when other people were probably watching the telly. We can't do anything in this place without wearing some safety equipment. We'll be able to go into the lab. Safety glasses. I'm studying chemical engineering. The labs are more what you'd actually do in a chemical engineering type role in industry, for example. So you're not like mixing beakers and things. It's mainly like turning knobs and reading a computer display and things like that. I never know quite what to say when people say, well, it's fine that you're doing a PhD in literature, but what are you actually doing? It's about literature and translation. So once a book has been written and published, how is it that it's still being read 150 years later? I'd only ever been to Manchester for an Oasis concert. That's the only time I've ever been to Manchester before I fly to go. I wanted to go to a big city, and I think Manchester was always my number one choice. Every time you walk into the, the main library, the University Challenge Trophy underneath the escalator, it's a constant reminder, I guess. It's got pride of place here in our library, and we see it every time we walk in. It's a real kind of inspiration. 
I'm a first year genetics and Chinese student. It's a dual honours course, which means that I will be doing a genetics portion and a Chinese portion, not genetics in Chinese, which would probably be an overload, I think. My day-to-day -day life is mostly trying to, like, doing my work and then trying to forget about the existence of my degree and do something else. My main extracurricular thing is debating, which is not, re it's like, it's not really relaxing as such, but it's quite fun. I like chemistry because of all the colours that you get when you do reactions, because it's really boring to make white solids all the time. The previous Manchester teams are one big happy family and spend time together enjoying the show and helping out the newcomers. We often watch the shows together, like us and some of the former years. The Manchester team are all here to watch their second quarter final broadcast. We've got the previous teams here as well, next year's team. So it's just, we all come here for a couple of bites and watch it. They're always getting lots of questions right, and I suddenly realise, you know, these guys do know their stuff. It's quite interesting to think what it's going to be like when we'll be the ones on the screen there next year. I'm more nervous now than I was before about being on the show. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Here's to us. Good luck, guys. Cheers. Each institution has its own approach to the audition process, and given its successful track record, it's no surprise that Manchester's involves a rigorous training regime. I'm Stephen Pearson. I'm the organiser, commonly referred to as the coach of the University of Manchester team. For the past 16 years, Stephen has been the driving force behind the Manchester University Challenge squad. I run the selection process, um, which involves a written test and then a test of speed on the buzzer. And then from people's performance on that, I try to choose what I think is the best team of four students whose breadth of knowledge complements each other. All I do is hold a University Challenge style friendly practice session about once every week against uh, people from past Manchester University teams. I'm Richard, I was captain last year. Steve asked me to come down and help out with these sort of like mini matches. I think there's four generations of UMass Challenge team here. Because there's yeah. this one, <clears throat> then there's Liz's team, me and David's team and Mike's team before that. Manchester are seen by lots of the other teams as a team to beat. I've been referred to as the Alex Ferguson of the quiz world and I suppose in that sense sort of Manchester University perhaps appropriately is sort of um, the Manchester United of the quiz world. Stephen's fab and he has a passion for quizzing and getting people into it. I've been doing this since 1997. I was the captain of the Manchester team as a postgraduate student in 1996. Manchester Pearson. With Grampians? Grampians is correct. <laughs> I wanted to carry on getting involved. Ernest Hemingway's 1929 novel, A Farewell to Arms, has been credited with introducing into the English language which Italian expression used both as a greeting and a form of goodbye. What did you give Ciao. Ciao. Bang. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Stephen fully sort of channels Jeremy Paxman. Puddle Glum, who appears in the Narnia story The Silver Chair, is a member of which race of pessimistic frog-like humanoids? No, it's um, Marsh Wiggles. Uh, another starter? But I can't imagine anyone less. Like <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Just really to get the uh, team used to um, competing alongside each other and get to know each other's strengths and weaknesses and get to know each other's sort of characters generally. It's, it's not just knowing about the right answers, it's perhaps even more the sort of ability to relax in the studio rather than be intimidated by, by Jeremy Paxman in particular or just by the experience of, of being in a television studio. In referring to her, that's uh, Opposition Hindle. Electra. It was indeed Electra, yes, for 10 points. And the score standing at 180 to Manchester, 110 to the Opposition team. <laughs> Can we have like a ceremonial bat on to pass? <laughs> it would be nice to get a, a fifth victory, but I'm not going to um, be uh, too disappointed if, if it doesn't happen. So, has all the hard work paid off? Time for the moment of truth. The Manchester team are about to sit their audition at the new home of University Challenge, Salford's Media City. Nice voice you here will be our questions editor, Tom. Uh, good luck. Which type of radiation consists of high energy photons emitted in the decay of an atomic nucleus? Go back in time 100 million years. In which geological period are you? One, two, three, Jeremy. 
teams from previous years and said to us, oh, don't worry, it'll be fine. It's just to prove you're not a complete idiot. But <laughs> honestly, the difficulty's been kind of notched up. <laughs> <laughs> or we're idiots. Or we're idiots. Maybe it's that. Okay. It could be that. Manchester's chance to impress the producers is over. And just like the teams that have gone before them, they are keen to qualify and compete with the best. Competition between institutions is fierce. Over the show's 52-year history, age-old rivalries have emerged. On one hand, there are the Oxbridge Colleges, that some may consider the home of the elite. And on the other are the Red Bricks, the ancient Scottish universities, the plate glass institutions of the 60s, and the former polytechnics. St John's Bennett Sprague. Sybil. Sybil is right, yes. The common perception is that Oxbridge always win, but in reality, the split over the 52-year history of the show is pretty much even. It's a televisual David versus Goliath, where the viewers often find themselves rooting for the perceived underdog. Edinburgh Foster. Millican. Oxbridge colleges do have a sort of a reputation for winning it. And it was funny, you know, even now, sometimes if, if it comes up in conversation or someone mentions it, people will assume if you won University Challenge, oh, which, which Oxbridge college were you at? Warwick Christodoulou. Zip. And then I say, no, actually, I wasn't at Oxford or Cambridge. I was at, I was at Warwick. Warwick Christodoulou. Best mate. Best mate is right, yes. One of the wonderful things about Leicester winning was we were rank outsiders. <laughs> Nobody thought that, you know, a little newly founded Redrick University with about 2,000 students were going to beat Balliol Oxford in the final and were going to pull down the Oxbridge edifice. And it was just so wonderful. And not only the university, but the whole town was proud of us. <laughs> My name's Aubrey Lawrence. We're representing Keele University, which then was almost entirely unknown. In spite of the fact that we were a new university, I think it was the first time that a Cambridge college had got through to the final as well. The team I always sort of look out for facing um, is Magister College Oxford. Magister Pearson. The phlogiston theory. Absolutely correct. <laughs> when I was the captain of the Manchester team in 1997, we faced Magister College Oxford in the semi-final, and with 20 seconds to go, Jeremy Paxman asked the last starter. There are only about 20 seconds to go, but you might do it. Just wasn't quite quick enough on the buzzer. How would a chiromantist tell your fortune? Magister Andres. You read your palm. By reading your palm is correct. Yeah! They went on, therefore, to win the semi-final by 15 points, and they went on to win the final. That's always been the sort of rivalry since then for me personally. But although some may consider Oxbridge to be the preserve of the privileged few, in actuality, the modern-day makeup of its students is ever-changing. Kansas. Correct. What is the home state of the Yankee in King Arthur's court, according to the title of Mark Twain's satirical essay? Connecticut. That is correct. And I'll start a question. One of the things, actually, that I was most proud about was the fact that three out of four of us came from state schools. Maudlin Fitzpatrick. Turner. Turner is right. How's it for works with Turner? The previous year's team, I think they were all state school educated, so that's seven out of eight. Oxford students, old institution like Maudlin, kind of tradition of kind of lots of people from public schools. We were all seven out of eight of us state school educated. Slide rule? So you always sound so surprised. <laughs> Positrons? Correct. Churchill? Yes, it was. Don't look so surprised. It's right. <laughs> I was really, really proud of that, and I think it showed a properly kind of modern face to the university. And it's Sarah's old college of Magdalen Oxford that holds the joint claim of being University Challenge's highest achievers, alongside Manchester, having won the series an impressive four times. And that was on. It doesn't matter. Open have 195, Magdalen have 250. We've been amazingly successful at this particular type of activity. One of the things that you find in common about the students there is that they, um, is that they care a great deal about their subjects and they care a great deal about just knowing things. Oh, and that's very helpful when quizzing, really. They were also the first institution ever to win for two consecutive years. 
Maudlin, 225, great score. Uh, you have pulled off a quite unprecedented achievement in the history of University Challenge. We couldn't believe it. It set up a bit of a tradition for Maudlin. This is the first time the same institution has won it two years running. The college took it quite seriously and uh, were particularly proud of being able to say that we had done this two years in a row. And I think maybe that's part of the reason they've carried on with that tradition, is because they're so supportive of people taking part. And the achievements didn't end there. You're the first institution in the history of this programme to win the trophy three times. It was quite exciting because there was this whole thing about who's going to be the first to win it three times. And then, of course, when we won, we were the first ever to have won it three times. And we actually got to keep the trophy when we lifted it and I went up to accept it. And it was so heavy. So the one you see now, if you look at it carefully, you can see it's much thinner. It's only sort of like the front of a book. It doesn't have the pages behind it, which, 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 which made it so heavy. And at the John York University have 85, more than College Oxford have 290. I also felt that we needed to keep up the strong tradition of winning that had been established in the college. It's just a really great feeling. It must be something like the feeling of bowling out a test batting side for 50 runs or something. That's how it felt. So, have Maudlin found the team that will compound their status as one of University Challenge's most successful institutions? Maudlin College was founded in 1458 during the reign of Henry VI and named after Mary Magdalene. It's also home to a gargoyle with an uncanny resemblance to a certain presenter. This year's team, desperate to secure a place on the show, are fourth year classicist Harry Gillow. University Challenge is the last great hurrah of the generalist, the people who know a little bit about everything, but not enough to ever be useful. Captain and chemistry student Hugh Binney. As part of the University Quiz Society, we meet up and do sort of university-style quizzing. Third-year chemist Chris Savory. It's hard to describe, I guess, how you feel after answering a particularly hard question. Tom McKenzie, reading a PhD in classical languages and literature. The pressure's on us as a team to try and... Uh, to try and beat Manchester now that Manchester has equaled uh, uh, Maudlin's uh, number of wins. And French and philosophy student Cameron Quinn. There would never be anything like this on American television. It's, it's too, it expects too much of the viewer. It expects too much of the contestant. If they make it onto the series, is this the team to bring home the trophy for a fifth time? I came to Maudlin and I remember first of all thinking, wow, this is incredibly beautiful. It is just the most amazing place to be. It's particularly fitting that I should have chosen Maudlin since it was the first Oxford college I ever saw. I'm originally from Southern California, um, Pasadena specifically, but you just say Los Angeles because nobody's heard of Pasadena. So this is my room. The way that I dress and comport myself has something to do with a really ardent embrace of this new place where I find myself to a stereotypical extent. Nobody actually really my age dresses like this anymore. It's a way of saying I prefer this place to my home. I'm uh, studying for a PhD in classical languages and literature. It involves many, many hours in the library, um, reading lots of books, thinking about them, and then writing about them. When we're in our fourth year, we especially do a research project. My particular project is in what's known as geometrical frustration. I'm definitely very proud of Morden. We've done exceptionally well in the competition so far. Until I came to study here, I don't think I really knew that Maudlin had won a record number of times, but I suppose that does mean that the pressure's on us. Maudlin's got an amazing history with University Challenge, and joined with Manchester has won it four times, which is more than any other institution. This is one of the signs from back in the day, and it was presented to Morden by Anthony Beaver. This is a constant reminder of the pressure we as a team face to try to live up to this amazing reputation that Morden has in University Challenge. Well, here we are in Morden College's chapel. C.S. Lewis was a fellow here for about 20, 30 years, and that was, that was just fantastic that there's sort of this heritage to the college. I feel very privileged to be able to have the chance to be alongside such talented and knowledgeable people as these, and hopefully I won't let them down too badly. Well, now's the time to find out. The auditions are well underway, and the production team have arrived in Oxford, where a variety of colleges and institutions will audition, all keen to impress and bag a place on the show. 
We're from Lincoln College, otherwise known as that one on Tower Street next to Jesus that nobody knows about. We're the team from St Hilda's College. Uh, we're from Trinity College, Oxford. Oxford's colleges have been crowned University Challenge champions a staggering 15 times, and one of the many teams to audition today is Magdalen College. And the roll call doesn't end there. We're the team from Merton College. We're from Regent's Park College. Jesus College, Oxford. St. Lady Margaret Hall. Balliol College, Oxford. We're Oxford Brooks University Challenge team. So we're, we're not a college, but they let us in sometimes. Until very recently, we had the St. Hilda's College had the record lowest score of all time. Impressive. Over two days, the Oxford wannabes will be quizzed, interviewed, probed and photographed, searching for that heady mix of brains and personality. University students put themselves forward as sort of England's best and brightest, and this is their chance to sort of put themselves before the public. In a long tradition of horrible puns, um, this is my own challenge. For those of you at home who don't need any clues, congratulations. For those of you who do need a moment, um, as you can see, we have a Reddy, then we have a bear, also known as a teddy bear, and then spelling out Ready, Teddy, Go. The colleges are prone to some serious rivalry, but it doesn't end there, as siblings and school friends are just as feisty. My older brother, who's doing a master's at Gombling Keys, Cambridge, is also on their university challenge team. I have a message for her in that she's going to go down. She's, there's no, no chance for her, no, no possibility of her winning. Depending on how things transpire, it could just be the, the biggest case of sibling rivalry in a 20-year relationship. <laughs> <laughs> My twin brothers appeared on the show uh, last series, uh, but he only got to the first round. My name is James Burt and I'm from Colchester in Essex, and I'm reading law. This would be the crowning achievement of my life to date if I could uh, get through, pass where he got, and, uh, and improve on the family record. I've got a bet with uh, my mate back home, which I made in year nine, and he bet me that I couldn't get on University Challenge in my three years at university. The students have one common goal, to shine, and show the producers, and hopefully viewers, just how clever they are. I'm Paddy, and uh, I'll introduce you to the rest of the team now, if you'll follow me. The team sit the dreaded 40-question audition test. Pants out, if you will. Then it's time to get to know them a little better. Never did anybody watch Uni Challenge last night? I was doing a shift in the college bar and they had it on on the TV that's like opposite the bar and so I was watching it like, God, I better get some of these questions. <laughs> what would be your game plan if you got on? There are certain subjects where I'm always there. Like if I had a buzzer, I would be on it. You know, the ones who, <laughs> in the first four words, like, I've got it. I think it's really important that the broader public um, sees people at this, in this institution as kind of like normal people. I mean, I know we're not that normal, <laughs> but like, well, at least say, say approachable. Are you guys happy with Emma as the captain? I think she's done a good job so far. If you weren't, then this is the first one I've heard about. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think you guys are going to be remembered if you get through to the televised stage? What do you think will stand out to people about you guys? Probably Harry's accent and my dress sense will be <laughs> special. <laughs> 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 The production team can now mark the test papers and reflect on the teams they've seen today. There's going to be a lot of arguing the toss, I think, because there's just there's so little between them, and they're all brilliant in very different ways. One, two, three. <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy. One, two, three. Jeremy. Jeremy. It's going to be a bit heartbreaking, to be honest, because we've seen some lovely teams that are right on the border of the kind of score that would get them through. Competition is fierce to be one of only 28 teams who will make it onto the show. Our interview was pretty tough. We know we've got a few, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Well, I thought it went quite well. Seemed all right. We were described as cavalier. The odds are stacked against getting through because everybody wants to be on University Challenge. Just like the colleges in Oxford, every institution feels their strongest team. And over the years, we've enjoyed players whose knowledge and performance has become legendary and an inspiration to up-and-coming contestants. Right, Chris Didulu. Hadley. I think the first series of University Challenges I really watched properly was around 2007. It was the series that Warwick won when they were captained by Daisy Chris Didulu. France and the Netherlands. Correct. There were moments where the, the, the question would be asked, and that, you know, the number of thoughts would be going through your head and the number of things you'd be thinking, 
Uh, and then, you, you know, you watch it back and you think, oh, but it was, all, it was all so quick, how did that all happen, you know? Warwick Christodoulou. Reuse, recycle. Correct. Daisy's individual efforts were just really outstanding. And after that point, I really wanted to sort of see if I could get anywhere near that level and maybe one day be on the show myself. Emmanuel College won... Uh, Back in 2009. Uh, um, with Alex Gutten plan as their team captain. I arrived at Emmanuel College, I began my degree right after they just won, and I nearly fainted when I first saw him. <laughs> what initial three letters link a variety of hops associated with Pilsner beer, the largest island of Estonia, a small German state on the French border, the man who became president of Georgia in 2008, and a Swedish... Er Emmanuel Gutten plan. S-A-A. -A. Correct, yep. He was a fantastic contestant captain the team that was the first Cambridge College to win since we had. Ten points for this. What single letter links the symbol for the CGS unit of magnetic flux density, the metric prefix for 10 to the power 9? Uh, Emmanuel Guttenplan. G. G is correct. Heard people regarding me as some kind of legend of university challenge. In meteorology, from the Greek for turning, what name is given to the lowest layer of the atmosphere? Emmanuel Guttenplan. Troposphere. Correct. Your bonus. Being a team captain, you get more credit than you deserve. It was a great team, not just one great player that won it. Gail Trimble, of course, um, is, is usually memorable. Ten points for this. The Assyrian came down like a wolf on the fold and his corpus Christi Trimble. Destruction of Senna by Byron. Yeah, I can accept that. Yeah, I was only going to look looking for Byron's name, but you give me the whole thing. That's fine. It was absolutely astounding when the kind of people who sort of add up statistics and notice that I'd done so well compared to other people in the past. I found myself being celebrated, I suppose, on websites and then people sort of calling me, you know, the human Google and all these, these other um, nice things um, just about how, how good I was at it. You're sort of quite a modest person. You look at it all and you say, well, I see that, that, that I, I did do very well, didn't I? You know, fair enough. Some players are legendary because of their historical link to the show. Madeline Moore was on Leicester's team of 1963, the winners of University Challenge's first ever series. We were all presented with a shorter Oxford Dictionary, and inside there is a... Presented to Madeline Hall as a member of the winning team in Granada's University Challenge Tournament 1963. Even though footage of the show no longer exists, Madeline still has her treasures from the inaugural series. These are among my most treasured possessions. I've had them for 52 years now. Memory lane becomes a very important place as you get older. The final stop on the University Challenge audition tour is also the home of the one institution that has single-handedly made more appearances than any other. Edinburgh King. Edinburgh University has taken part more than 20 times, but frustratingly, the trophy has always eluded them. Bad luck, Edinburgh. You got off to a terrific start. Even Conservative MP Sir Malcolm Rifkin couldn't win in 1967. Edinburgh University has dominated the old town since 1583. It has over 30,000 students and is the sixth oldest university in the English-speaking world. Keen to make it through the auditions and earn a place on the show are this year's hopefuls. First up, there's chemistry PhD student Thomas Suslak. For me, it, it is that competitive streak in me. I mean, I play, I play against my dad, I play against my wife. Team captain Alex Gapood, a PhD student in social anthropology. It's a game, and in any game, there's that psychological, mental aspect, which, which is incredibly complex, incredibly messy sometimes. Third year chemistry undergraduate Innes Carson. Being there in the studio, seeing University Challenge being made and being part of the thing is just it's an honor for me. Joe Curran, reading for a PhD in economic and social history. I do really like the competitive nature of quizzing. I do feel, you know, very satisfied that, um, that I know things. And Nico Ovenden, reading for a master's in cultural studies. Between us, we've got a great spread of knowledge, and I think this year is as good as any. Could this be the team to finally bring the trophy to Edinburgh? Here's what makes them tick. The project I'm actually working on is looking at what I'm calling imperial memory and imperial amnesia in contemporary England. I love English people. 
I love Darjeeling, and I also smoke a tobacco pipe from time to time. And I was doing some reading outside in George Square, and it just dawned on me. And the sentence just popped into my head, and the sentence is, I'm very proud of this. And yet, as I smoke my tobacco pipe while drinking Darjeeling from a famous London tea merchant this afternoon, something seems strangely amiss about the pervasive notion that empire is a distant thing of the past, both temporally and spatially. I think it fits part of my personality. So um, that, and I just enjoy it. I'm particularly proud of the project I'm doing it this year as my master's project, which involves platinum and other rare metals, stuff like that. I'm finding out things that no one else has found out before. This is where it all happens. There you've got your brightly coloured things, brightly coloured chemicals, fancy machinery. It's always just kind of captured my imagination as a child. I'm studying a PhD in economic and social history, and specifically uh, my topic is philanthropic networks in early 19th century Dublin. University Challenge has a kind of a little extra edge to it in that the questions are often, you know, they're that little bit clever, they're, they combine a few kind of obscure things. I, I find it very satisfying. I used to watch University Challenge with my dad as a kid and I just sat there kind of going. I'm doing a master's in cultural studies. It's fishing with dynamite, finding culture in this city. So I'm doing my PhD in neuroinformatics and neural computation. Everyone looks at me and says, what on earth is that? I think this could be the year Edinburgh wins it. I, I don't mind saying that. I think we have a lot to prove, and I think as Scottish universities go, we're the team to prove it. But before they can take home the trophy, they must first impress the producers. After almost two weeks travelling all over the country, we are finishing the tour up here in Scotland in the very beautiful surroundings of Edinburgh University. I don't want to be arrogant or cocky, but, but I feel good about this. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Which country gained independence from France in 1960? I think it was rather challenging. What was it, 28 spots for over 140, so... Yeah. Um, you got to be good. Yeah. you got to be yeah. the best. Yeah. Jeremy! And that's it. The University Challenge auditions for 2014 are finally over. All across the land, over 130 hopeful teams have racked their brains and pitted their wits hoping to bag an impressive score, win over the producers and finally make the grade. OK, so after three, one, two, three... Jeremy! <laughs> Jeremy! Jeremy! Now all they can do is wait to hear if they're one of the 28 teams chosen to appear on this year's series. If they are successful, they'll join an exclusive group of people taking their place in the University Challenge Hall of Fame. My appearance on University Challenge not only gives me great satisfaction, it changed my life. Before I went on University Challenge, I was a nerd. I became a very outgoing person from having been exactly the opposite, and University Challenge did that for me. Some of my friends still introduce me at uh, parties as someone who won uni University Challenge as if it's the only thing I'll ever do. When you start a new job, people will Google you and they'll find out that that's what you did and they'll want to talk about it. They want to find out, you know, what it was like being on the programme. When we were presented with a trophy, you know, you sort of, sort of lifting it up and my mum and dad were in the audience and I, I sort of looked up at them and they were cheering and that's a really nice moment, you know, that's not something I'm going to forget in a hurry. It's a wonderful thing and I think you don't, you don't fully appreciate when you, when you win it just just afterwards quite how much it's going to sit with you um, kind of for the rest of your life as being as being almost the defining instance no matter uh, no matter what else you're going to do later coming up next time is decision day back at base there we go this is our final 28 guys as the producers select the 28 teams that will appear on the show it's going to be a pretty damn good series and a nation of students hello waits anxiously by the phone Hi, hello. I just want to say, I'm very pleased to be able to tell you. And we find out what it's like to come face to face with the formidable Jeremy Paxman. Well, I seem to remember him being quite grumpy at the time, uh, definitely quite challenging. I wouldn't say I was aware of my reputation. No, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, for good or bad, and frankly, I'd rather keep it that way. 
So coming up on BBC Two, two of that illustrious 28, it's tropical medicine against economics, an all-London bout of university challenge next. Then with the referendum campaigns in the crucial final stages, Alex Salmond faces Alex Alistair Darling in live debate. Scotland decides at 8.30. And on BBC Four, Al Murray turns his lens on great British war movies.